Let me show you how easy it is to make a rustic wooden sign. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. As you might know, we're working on completely renovating a lake house that we're going to be turning into a part-time or a vacation rental. I'm working on the hallway and I love the addition of this DIY wooden sign. I'm teaming up with Cricut who is sponsoring this video today to show you how you can make one of these signs on your own. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. I still have to paint it, but my vision for this hallway is to have whoever comes and visits here take photos, send them to me, and I can make a little photo wall sharing everybody's memories from this space. Ready to make your own DIY wooden sign? Let's get started. To begin, grab a piece of half an inch plywood that is the desired size of your sign minus the frame. I was lucky and was able to reuse a piece of wooden shelving from our lake house rental that was a great size for a sign. You can cut plywood yourself with a table saw or you can have a piece cut for you at a home improvement store. Then you can paint or stain your plywood to any color you'd like. I think it's easier to paint the plywood a solid color for your first sign so that you can easily make any touch-ups with that paint at the end. For this one, I'm creating a DIY whitewash with one part white chalk paint to one part water and lightly brushing that on my plywood. Wiping it off after creates a stained effect that will let my wood grain show through. I really love this technique. Next, measure the sides of your plywood and cut two one by two pieces of lumber at that length with a miter saw. The sides of my sign were 16 inches and I'm using spruce wood from the Home Depot. Now you can measure the top of your sign and add the depth of the two side frame pieces to that measurement. My sign was 42 inches wide and my two side frame pieces were 3 quarters inches deep each, so my measurement altogether was 42 plus 3 quarters plus 3 quarter inches, which equals 43 and a half inches. I will leave a link down in the description box below to the full written tutorial for this. With a miter saw, cut two pieces of the 1x2 lumber to this length. If you wish, you can stain or paint your frame pieces and let them dry. I'm using a stain color called Provincial for my pieces. After your sign pieces dry, prepare to glue and nail on the frame. You can either put the frame on so the back of it is flush with the back of the sign or you can raise the plywood up a little with scrap pieces of wood so there's space behind the sign. I'm choosing to do the latter for this sign so that I can hang it from the wall right off of the frame which I think makes it so easy. If you do do the first option you can screw on some D-ring hangers to the back of your sign to hang it that way. Next, apply wood glue to the edges of your plywood. This is really important and I've forgotten to do this in a couple of signs, but this is what's going to keep that frame on nice and snug. Position your frame pieces around your plywood and use a finishing nailer to nail them firmly in place. Be careful to aim the nail gun into the center of that plywood so that the nails don't show on the front or back of the sign. If you do a little mistake like I do and have a nail showing through, you can kind of hammer that gently back into the wood. While your sign is drying, you can create your sign design in Cricut Design Space. Create a new project and then use the shape tool to create a rectangle that's the same size as your sign for reference. Now you can play with Cricut's fonts to make a sign that's perfect for your space. I'm using the fonts Tango and Rockwell to make my design. You can also play with the letter spacing and line spacing to make your words look exactly the way you want them to. Once you have a design that you like, make sure to group all of the words together using this attach tool on the bottom right. I'm attaching each word together, but not the entire design, so that I can fit this rather large design on a 12 by 24 inch Cricut mat. Now just click make it and send your design to your Cricut machine. At this point, you can adjust where you want each word on your mat to create your stencil, if you like. It does it automatically for you first. 
You can either choose to cut out vinyl for your sign and apply that directly to your sign, or you can do what I'm doing for this sign and make a stencil with stencil vinyl and paint your letters right on. I do like the stenciled look for something a little bit more rustic, but I will leave a link to an example of a sign I did with metallic vinyl in that description box below. Use Cricut stencil vinyl and attach it to your mat. I'm using a fabric mat because it's the only one that I have in this larger 12 by 24 inch size, but I'd recommend using just that regular mat instead. Choose the custom setting on your Cricut machine. I'm using the Cricut Explore Air 2 and then search for the stencil vinyl on design space. This will tell your machine exactly what pressure to cut to get that perfect result on your stencil vinyl. It does all the work for you in choosing that perfect pressure. Now all you have to do is press go and your Cricut is gonna go ahead and cut your stencil and you can sit back and relax. Once your cut is complete, remove the vinyl from the mat, and I like to cut each word out individually. Now you can remove any of the letters that the stencil remains. If you're doing this the other way, with the vinyl going right onto the sign, you're going to do the opposite, so you're going to weed away any of that negative space and leave the letters on the backing. Next, cut some transfer tape that's the same size as your first stencil piece and smooth it on over top of that vinyl. What transfer tape does is it helps you transfer your stencil perfectly to your plywood and it keeps all those little smaller pieces like the insides of the letters in the right place. You can refer to your design and mark out the center of your sign on the sign with a pencil and determine where each stencil piece needs to be. Now carefully remove the stencil attached to the transfer tape from its backing and press it in place on your wooden sign. Smooth it down onto the sign with Cricut's tool or just use a craft stick or a credit card and then carefully pull away the transfer tape. Repeat this process with the other stencil pieces until they're all in place. I like to reuse my transfer tape for each piece of my stencil so I'm not creating excess waste. I find it does remain sticky for a nice long time. You can also use scraps of stencil vinyl if you want to cover more areas of your sign for painting. Now here's my little secret to preventing lots of bleed through when stenciling is first brush a thin layer of decoupage medium over the stencil before you paint it. So here I'm using Mod Podge. This adds a little layer between your wooden sign and that paint so that you'll get a cleaner edge on your letters. After the decoupage medium has dried, carefully brush on one to two coats of paint, letting that first coat dry before painting the second. Here I'm using acrylic paint, but you could use your favorite kind of paint like chalk paint instead. Once the paint is dry, this is my absolute favorite part. Carefully remove the stencil vinyl to reveal your design. Okay. 
I was really happy with how crisp my letters looked on this sign. There were a couple little bleed through areas, but I was able to touch those up with a little bit of paint and a small brush. Now you can leave your sign just like this, which is what I was originally going to do. That's kind of what I had in my head. But at the last minute, I decided I wanted to make my sign look a little more vintage by distressing it. That's the thing with some projects, right? You have this idea in your head and a direction, but sometimes it just ends up going somewhere totally different. To distress your wooden sign, take some fine sandpaper and sand over the letters. Now use a soft cloth to wipe away any dust at the end. I thought my sign turned out super cute. I love how it just kind of turned vintage on me, which is kind of what I like to do anyway. I hung it up on a couple of screws right in the shiplap on this hallway wall. I am still going to paint this wall, probably just white, but I might paint it that same dark blue that I have in the bedroom in this home. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know down in those comments below. I'm really hoping we can add some pictures of all the adventures that happen here at the lake house underneath this sign and create a really meaningful space here. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this wood sign tutorial. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever made one of these and what your tips are, or if you would like to make one. Thanks again to Cricut for sponsoring today's video and always being so supportive of my creativity. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave more videos that I hope you will love and watch next right up here.